Gene Kelly was a famous actor who did a lot in the entertainment world. What work of his do you like the most? Is there a part in his performances that really stuck with you? Share your favorite memories or stories about this actor in the comments below. We'll be sharing some interesting facts about Gene Kelly's life and career. There are funny, surprising, and sad things to learn. Keep watching! Born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Gene Kelly grew up in a tight-knit family surrounded by music and dance. His parents encouraged his interests early on, and he showed a natural talent for performing. Attending the University of Pittsburgh, he initially studied economics, but soon discovered his true passion lay in the arts. After college, he moved to New York City to pursue a career in entertainment, facing numerous challenges along the way. His big break came with a role in the Broadway musical Pal Joey in 1940, which earned him praise and caught Hollywood's attention. He then ventured into the film industry, starring in memorable movies like Singin' in the Rain and An American in Paris. Gene Kelly's innovative choreography and athleticism changed how dance was portrayed on screen, leaving a lasting mark on the entertainment world. His work continues to inspire performers and audiences today. In that entertainment, Park Truman 2, he teamed up with Hollywood legend Fred Astaire to host, charming audiences with their talent. They also appeared together in the 1945 film Ziegfeld Follies. Another big moment came in Singin' in the Rain, where he played Don Lockwood. Debbie Reynolds, his co-star, didn't have much dance training, but he helped her improve her performance, with Fred Astaire lending a hand too. In Anchor's Org, he showed off his Zorro-style dance moves, which surprised audiences. His impact on movies is significant, shaping how we see dance and entertainment. His story continues to inspire performers today. This was in Singin' in the Rain, he played Don Lockwood. It's interesting that some people who did important work on the movie didn't get credit. For example, Kathleen Freeman, who played Phoebe Dinsmore, didn't get credited. Also, Carol Haney and Gwen Verdon helped with the dancing, but weren't mentioned in the credits. In On the Town, he was Gaby. At first, MGM wanted George Abbott to direct, but they changed their minds because they didn't like how the stage show turned out. Instead, Gene Kelly and Stanley Donnan directed it, and Betty Comden and Adolph Green rewrote the script. In Zanadu, he played Danny McGuire. He choreographed a dance with Olivia Newton-John, but he wanted it done with few people around. Gene Kelly did important work in these movies that had a big effect on the movie industry. Gene Kelly took on memorable roles in various films. In On the Town, he played Gaby, a character praised by producer Arthur Freed for exceptional talent. Freed expressed admiration in a memo to Kelly and director Stanley Donan during filming, noting that the musical numbers were the most inspiring works Freed had seen in his career. He compared their brilliance to the esteemed duo Pressburger and Powell. In Zanadu, Kelly portrayed Danny McGuire, a character he previously played in the 1944 film Cover Girl alongside Rita Hayworth. Additionally, in The Three Musketeers, he took on the role of D'Artagnan, receiving fencing lessons from Belgian champion Jean Hermans, who appeared in the film as the Cardinal's guard, honing his skills for the role. These instances showcase his versatility as an actor and dedication to his craft, leaving a lasting impression on the world of cinema. In That's Dancing, Gene Kelly played a hosting role alongside other famous figures like Mikhail Barsnikov, Liza Minnelli, Sammy Davis Jr., and Ray Balger. The film received criticism for its pacing because the director chose only five hosts to cover almost a hundred years of dance history. Instead of assigning one narrator per theme like the previous film, the director paired up three of the hosts. He narrated two segments, exploring the early history of dance and looking towards the future. Some critics felt the film would have flowed better with more hosts to cover the vast amount of material. Additionally, his father worked as Al Jolson's road manager in the 1920s. In An American in Paris, Gene Kelly portrayed Jerry Mulligan. While vacationing in Paris, he discovered Leslie Caron performing in a ballet, leading to her casting in the film. This discovery further solidified his influence in the world of dance. Throughout his impressive career, he took on a variety of memorable roles that have left a lasting impression on classic films. In the musical comedy Less Girls, he played the character of Barry Nichols, showcasing his versatility as an actor. Nichols' mention of a chain of orange juice stands reminded viewers of the popular beverage franchise Orange Julius, adding humor and relatability to the character. In The Captivating an American in Paris, he faced unexpected production delays that tested his patience and perseverance. 
Despite the challenges, he firmly stood by the ballet sequence, recognizing its crucial role in the movie's success. This dedication to maintaining the film's integrity highlighted his commitment to delivering a timeless cinematic experience. One of his most acclaimed performances is in Singin' in the Rain, a musical masterpiece synonymous with his name. Following the iconic Good Morning number, a lesser-known incident occurred behind the scenes. Debbie Reynolds, his co-star, experienced physical challenges with burst blood vessels in her feet. In a display of camaraderie and professionalism, he supported her by dubbing the sound of her footsteps, ensuring the smooth continuation of the scene. These stories not only demonstrate his dedication to his craft, but also show his commitment to the quality of his work. Whether overcoming production hurdles or helping a fellow actor, his impact on the world of cinema is significant. In each role he took on, he showcased the artistry and dedication that defined his illustrious career. Gene Kelly played Tommy Albright in Brigadoon. During filming, Sid Sherry's had some issues with him and later said she preferred working with Fred Astaire. In An American in Paris, he was Jerry Mulligan. Interestingly, Leslie Caron walked on the same bridge he did two years later in another French-themed movie called Lily. As Don Lockwood in Singing in the Rain, he had a funny incident. Debbie Reynolds, who acted alongside him, accidentally left gum on a ladder rung. His fake hair got stuck on it during filming, and Reynolds stopped chewing gum after that. This mishap became a famous story from Hollywood's old days, showing how filming can be unexpected. These stories add to the charm of classic movies, reminding us that even famous scenes often come with funny accidents and challenges. In Anchor's Oig, he portrayed Joseph Brady, holding the rank of Gunner's mate second-class petty officer. His character, Joe, contributed to the storyline. The straightforward portrayal added depth, showcasing his ability to embody diverse characters. Moving on to Summerstock, he took on the character of Joe D. Ross. Despite challenges faced by Judy Garland during production, her professionalism stood out in the Portland fancy dance sequence where she matched him tap for tap. His performance demonstrated his skill in dance and his collaborative spirit on set. In An American in Paris, he played Jerry Mulligan. Despite his preference for shooting in Paris, the film was shot at MGM Studios in California. The studio faced difficulties securing travel arrangements and locations, leading to only two shots from Paris making it into the film. His objection highlighted his dedication to authenticity in roles. His roles in these films showcase his versatility and commitment to characters. Each portrayal brought a distinct element to the films, contributing to their overall effect on the audience. The challenges faced during production did not hinder his ability to deliver compelling performances, emphasizing his professionalism and adaptability on set. During the making of the movie Singin' in the Rain, there were several challenges. In the Broadway ballet sequence, originally intended to feature Gene Kelly and Donald O'Connor, Sid Sherry's replaced O'Connor due to a prior commitment. She had to adjust her dancing style to match Kelly's and had never danced in heels before. She also had to go on a strict diet to lose weight gained during her recent pregnancy. For the filming of the famous title number, studio technicians had to create an outdoor set by covering two city blocks with tarps to simulate a night scene. Despite a severe water shortage, they managed to set up sprays for Gene Kelly's performance. Many viewers thought it was filmed indoors at MGM's sound stages. The Make Him Laugh sequence was created because Gene Kelly felt Donald O'Connor needed a solo number. Despite initial uncertainty, they brainstormed ideas drawing from O'Connor's vaudeville routines. Each idea O'Connor suggested was carefully noted down, forming the entire number gradually. Throughout these challenges and creative processes, determination and collaboration shone through, contributing to the movie's lasting impact. In various musicals, Gene Kelly made a lasting impression on his co-stars and audiences. In Singin' in the Rain, he played Don Lockwood, a role that Debbie Reynolds found tough yet rewarding. Reynolds admitted she learned a lot from him, describing him as someone who always aimed for perfection and was strict. Despite getting frustrated sometimes, Kelly's patience and guidance helped Reynolds keep up with the tough routines. He also acknowledged Reynolds' resilience and ability to learn difficult choreography. In On the Town, Kelly's talent as Gaby impressed even Frank Sinatra, his co-star, who admitted he wasn't as good a dancer as Kelly. But with Kelly's guidance, Sinatra's performances were outstanding, showing Kelly's knack for bringing out the best in his co-stars. In The Pirate, Kelly starred as Seraphin alongside Judy Garland. It was the second time they worked together. 
This movie was part of a series of four films planned to feature Kelly and Garland, showing their great chemistry on screen. Unfortunately, Kelly's ankle injury led to his replacement in Easter Parade by Fred Astaire, changing their cinematic partnership. Throughout his career, Kelly influenced not just his own performances, but also the abilities and confidence of those around him. His dedication to his work and his willingness to work with others left a strong impression on the world of musical cinema. Gene Kelly, known for his memorable performances in classic films, displayed his talent in various memorable roles. In Zanadu, he played Danny McGuire, a character chosen because it was near his home in Beverly Hills. Despite facing challenges like battling a high fever during the filming of the title number in Singin' in the Rain, he delivered a remarkable performance as Don Lockwood. In The Pirate, the film's ending was not satisfactory to MGM after principal photography was completed. Following his advice, the finale was reworked, resulting in a spectacular musical number based on Be a Clown. With Vincent Minnelli directing and the collaboration of talented individuals like the Nicholas Brothers, the production sequence was choreographed and staged by him, leading to the acceptance of the revised ending by the studio bosses. Despite facing challenges, including the absence of key personnel like Barbara Karenska, the team successfully completed production. His role in these films, both on and off screen, remains essential to their lasting appeal. In the movie Cover Girl, he took charge. Columbia Pictures gave him control, and he made it a hit. Opening up the set, he allowed the dancers to take to the streets with graceful movements. Utilizing innovative techniques, he even danced with himself, dazzling audiences with his skillful execution. However, in Singing in the Rain, he faced objections. Some critics took issue with a suggestive move in a dance scene, sparking controversy with the censors. Prior to filming, he encountered Debbie Reynolds, initially uncertain about her casting. Throughout the production, he pushed her to her limits, striving for perfection, even at the cost of her exhaustion. Such challenges and triumphs behind the scenes ultimately shaped the iconic film Singin' in the Rain, illustrating the ups and downs of filmmaking. In several famous movies, Gene Kelly played memorable characters. In An American in Paris, he portrayed Jerry Mulligan. Interestingly, George's Goetieri, who also starred in the film, was actually two years younger than Kelly. To make Goetieri appear older, Gray was added to his hair. And on the town, he took on the role of Gaby. During filming, Jules Munchen humorously asked if Ava Gardner was waiting for him. However, it was Frank Sinatra who ultimately married Gardner in 1951, getting the last laugh. In Cover Girl, he portrayed Danny McGuire. Columbia had to give up its screen rights to the musical Best Foot Forward to MGM to secure his involvement in the film. His performances in these movies showcased his versatility and lasting influence on cinema. Gene Kelly was known for his commitment to authenticity in film. In one instance, he opposed producers who wanted to replace Michael Crawford's singing voice in a project. He believed in respecting the talents of his colleagues. In That's Entertainment, Part Roman 2, at the suggestion of Fred Astaire, they showcased their ability to dance, fearing audiences might think they were past their prime if they only conversed on screen. At 64, and with Astaire at 77, they delivered a memorable dance number, proving their timeless skill. In An American in Paris, his influence extended beyond the screen. A shirt worn in the film became a fashion statement sold by Pierre Cardin in the 1970s. This demonstrates his impact not just in film, but in popular culture. Throughout his career, his actions demonstrated his commitment to his craft and respect for fellow artists. He left a lasting impression that transcends generations. In Singing in the Rain, Gene Kelly brought Don Lockwood to life, showcasing his vibrant personality. Initially planned as a trio performance, he saw an opportunity to emphasize Lockwood's zest for life. In Summerstock, Kelly played alongside Judy Garland, marking their final on-screen collaboration. Despite Singin' in the Rain being seen as just another MGM musical upon release, it received limited Oscar recognition overshadowed by An American in Paris, another MGM musical featuring Kelly. Comparisons between the two films, both produced by Arthur Freed, were inevitable. However, Kelly's performances in both movies remain iconic, highlighting his talent and charm in cinema. In That's Entertainment, Part Room 2, Gene Kelly co-hosted with another actor. In the movie, keen observers could spot songs that were originally included, but got cut from the final version. You Stepped Out of a Dream from Ziegfeld Girl was initially intended for the opening scene. This is evident from the photo stills in Fred Astaire's and Gene Kelly's routine. 
two other songs, Lonesome Polecat from Seven Brides for Seven Brothers and Oscar Levant's Concerto in F from An American in Paris were also listed but ultimately removed. In Car 44, Robert B. Williams, playing the police sergeant, also chased Gene Kelly off the street, similar to a scene in On the Town. During rehearsals for Singing in the Rain, he pushed Debbie Reynolds hard, which led to Fred Astaire comforting her. Such moments where tasks were mastered and performances delivered helped shape memorable scenes in cinema. Gene Kelly, famous for his roles in classics like An American in Paris and Summer Stock, left behind a lasting impact on audiences worldwide. After his passing, he was cremated without a formal funeral or memorial service. In An American in Paris, he played the spirited Jerry Mulligan. During filming, there was a break on November 1, 1950, so he could focus on perfecting ballet choreography. This break showed his dedication to his craft, ensuring every step was graceful and precise. Filming resumed on December 6 under director Vincent Minnelli's guidance. In Summerstock, Kelly portrayed Joe D. Ross alongside Jean Coyne, his future wife and dance assistant. They shone together in the lively dig, dig, dig for your dinner sequence, showcasing their chemistry on and off screen. These stories give insight into the life and career of a cinematic legend whose impact continues to be felt by movie fans worldwide. Gene Kelly's influence in entertainment is enduring and treasured, remembered in the history of film. In various films, the actor portrayed memorable characters. In CoverGirl, he played Danny McGuire, acting alongside Rita Hayworth and Phil Silvers. That scene, similar to Singin' in the Rain, showed his talent without the rain and umbrellas. In Singin' in the Rain, he took on the role of Don Lockwood and got Donald O'Connor's help to handle frustrations with Debbie Reynolds during filming. Interestingly, O'Connor later shared this with Reynolds. In An American in Paris, the character he played encountered Hollywood-built Paris sets that he found unconvincing. Despite this, his performances are celebrated in cinema. His dance skills and expressions captivated audiences, leaving a lasting impression on the silver screen. With each role, he brought a unique energy and charisma that defined an era of Hollywood magic. Through his seamless blend of athleticism and grace, he breathed life into characters that still connect with audiences today. The actor's impact on film not only entertained, but also inspired generations of performers to follow in his legendary footsteps. His influence as a cinematic icon remains strong, showing his talent and passion for his craft over time. Gene Kelly, known for his memorable roles in classic Hollywood musicals, portrayed characters such as Jerry Mulligan in An American in Paris and Gabion on the Town. In An American in Paris, his ballet background made him the preferred choice for the role over Fred Astaire. David O. Selznick, impressed by Kelly's performance in Pal Joey on Broadway, signed him to his first Hollywood contract without requiring a screen test. Selznick later sold his contract to MGM, where he found success in films like Anchor's Oig alongside Frank Sinatra. On the Town, promoted as twice as cheerful as Anchor's Oig, showcased his talents in another lively musical setting. His career flourished due to his unique blend of dancing, acting, and charisma, solidifying his reputation as a Hollywood legend. In the movie Anchor's Oig, he played Joseph Brady. Later, the film was turned into a 60-minute radio show by Lux Radio Theater on December 29, 1947, with Frank Sinatra, him, and Catherine Grayson reprising their roles. In another MGM production, Singin' in the Rain, released in 1952, he portrayed Seraphin. The song Make Him Laugh from the movie was borrowed from Be a Clown without any dispute from Cole Porter, though he didn't sing it. The film also featured Donald O'Connor. In Less Girls, he played Barry Nichols, driving an AC Ace Bristol Roadster, which later served as inspiration for the Shelby Cobra. Gene Kelly took on various roles throughout his career. In Ziegfeld Follies, he performed alongside Fred Astaire and other stars in different acts. In Anchor's Oig, he played the character Joseph Brady. Initially, Walt Disney's studio couldn't start a project with him due to wartime commitments, but Disney intervened, allowing Kelly to work with animators Hannah and Barbara. In Singing in the Rain, he starred as Don Lockwood. Originally, there was a scene where Kathy sang to a billboard of Don Lockwood, showing her admiration for him. This scene was added back in a DVD release. At the end of the movie, there's a duet between Miss Reynolds and him performing You Are My Lucky Star. His versatility shines through in these diverse roles, highlighting his talent as a performer. 
In Hollywood, he had a tense relationship with MGM studio head Louis B. Mayer. This feud started before he joined the film industry. After performing in Pal Joey on Broadway, Mayer offered him a contract without a screen test. However, when they asked for a screen test later, he refused, trusting Mayer's word. This led to his frustration when Mayer contradicted his promise. In response, he wrote a strong letter expressing his disappointment. The dispute continued, with him unsure if Mayer had even read the letter until it came up during an argument. In Singin' in the Rain, his character, Don Lockwood, is featured in a stunt montage during the opening credits of the Fall Guy series. An apparent outtake shows a stuntman doubling for him, attempting a stunt but failing, creating a funny moment in the filming process. Another interesting fact from his career is his role as Seraphin in The Pirate. A sequence involving him swinging from one wall to another is identical to a scene in Anchor's Oig, filmed in 1945. This repetition of a unique action showcases the subtle connections in his performances. His interactions with MGM and the quirks in his film sequences provide glimpses into the complexities of his career, adding layers to his cinematic legacy. Gene Kelly starred as D.R. Tagnan in The Three Musketeers, alongside a cast including Van Heflin, Gig Young, Lana Turner, Dame Angela Lansbury, and Frank Morgan. The film featured a talented lineup of actors, including two Oscar winners and four Oscar nominees. He was also ranked as the 15th greatest actor on the 50 greatest screen legends list by the American Film Institute. In On the Town, he portrayed Gaby, a role he held in high regard in his later years. In a BBC interview, he expressed that while there were better pictures made, this one represented the peak of their collective talent. Gene Kelly's performances left a lasting impact on the world of cinema, showcasing his talent and versatility across different roles. His work continues to be celebrated and remembered today. In the film That's Dancing, Gene Kelly appeared as self-host. In it, the sequence featuring Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers was shortened from six clips to two to save time. Originally, the sequence was supposed to start with a playful nod to the many dance crazes inspired by the duo, including bits from the karaoke, the Continental, and the Yam. There was a disagreement about which song to use for the ballroom section between Jack Haley Jr. and Gene Kelly. He argued for night and day, saying it better captured the essence of the Astaire Rogers collaboration. Ultimately, only night and day and pick yourself up were included in the final release. Kelly also disagreed with the decision to use top hat, white tie, and tails as the introduction to Astaire's work, preferring I Won't Dance instead. In the movie Singing in the Rain, Gene Kelly played Don Lockwood. Donald O'Connor, who played Kelly's friend, received praise from Kelly for his fouettes during the Moses Supposes scene. This positive interaction stood out to O'Connor amidst the challenges of filming. As Jerry Mulligan in An American in Paris, Kelly worked alongside Leslie Caron, who struggled with the demanding filming schedule due to past malnutrition. Caron's need to rest every other day sometimes frustrated Kelly. In Singing in the Rain, Gene Kelly cleverly adjusted his dance moves with Sid Sherry's to hide their height difference, making it less noticeable. They danced in perfect sync with the music, creating a palpable chemistry on screen. The film showcased not just his great dancing skills, but also his ability to adapt and be innovative in filmmaking. In Less Girls, he played the character Barry Nichols, showing his versatility as an actor and dancer. It was his last musical with MGM for a while, However, he made a strong comeback in the documentary That's Entertainment in 1974, reigniting public interest in his work and solidifying his reputation as one of Hollywood's best. Then in Zanadu, he danced alongside Olivia Newton-John as Danny McGuire, creating a magical on-screen partnership. Their graceful movements and infectious energy brought the film to life. For Newton-John, working with him was an unforgettable experience, showing the profound effect he had on his co-stars both professionally and personally. Throughout his career, Gene Kelly left a lasting impression on the world of musicals. His innovative choreography and charismatic performances continue to inspire artists and audiences across generations. Gene Kelly's role as a pioneer in musical cinema will always be remembered and celebrated. Gene Kelly holds a significant place in the film industry. He was ranked the 42nd greatest movie star of all time by Entertainment Weekly. In Anchor's Org, he took on the role of Joseph Brady and also got his first chance to choreograph an entire film. In That's Entertainment, he served as a co-host. 
The film's success largely owed to the skillful editing of Bud Friedgen and David E. Blewett, who condensed lengthy sequences into concise, interesting segments. Despite their pivotal role, they weren't recognized at the Oscars due to voters' limited familiarity with the original footage. Their expertise was evident in their work on subsequent installments of the series. His influence on cinema remains significant, with his talents showcased across various roles and projects. Throughout his career, Gene Kelly played various roles, showcasing his talent and versatility in different films. In That's Dancing, he co-hosted alongside Jack Haley Jr. due to challenges in accessing studio archives. Their original vision for the project faced changes because of limited footage availability. Tony Thomas' accompanying book offers glimpses of the intended material, while press kit stills provide insights into scenes excluded from the final cut. In Singin' in the Rain, he portrayed Don Lockwood. Initially, the famous Singin' in the Rain sequence was planned for him, Debbie Reynolds, and Donald O'Connor after a disappointing movie screening. However, the script evolved, omitting his rendition of All I Do is Dream of You, which was to follow a party scene. Although footage of this sequence is lost, its pre-recording remains on the soundtrack. The released film retained the party scene with Reynolds and the chorus dancing to the tune. In Zanadu, his role as Danny McGuire brought forth familiar choreography in Whenever You're Away From Me, reminiscent of his past work with Judy Garland in For Me and My Gal. The dance routines shared similarities, highlighting his distinctive style and influence in musical cinema. His work in film, spanning various roles and projects, continues to connect with audiences, showcasing his lasting influence on movies. During the filming of the rain scene in Singin' in the Rain, Gene Kelly faced a significant challenge. Despite a fever of 103 degrees, he pushed through and delivered a memorable performance. In Zanadu, he played Danny McGuire opposite Olivia Newton-John. While Newton-John's character was the muse of dance, she didn't have much dancing in the film except for a notable number alongside him. In the same movie, Kelly portrayed Don Lockwood. Initially, John Alton was hired as the cinematographer, impressing him with his work on the ballet sequence in An American in Paris. However, Alton was later replaced, reportedly due to political reasons despite objections from Kelly and Stanley Donan. His dedication to the craft, even under challenging circumstances, contributed to the lasting appeal of his performances. The work in these films continues to be celebrated for its innovation and artistry, showcasing his talent as a dancer and actor. This contribution to the movie industry is Gene Kelly, famous for his captivating performances during Hollywood's golden era, starred in several iconic roles alongside Frank Sinatra. In Anchor's Oig, he played Joseph Brady, marking the beginning of a cinematic partnership that lasted for three memorable films. They continued working together in On the Town, where he skillfully portrayed Gaby, showcasing his talents on the big screen. The crew's approach to filming in New York City aimed for authenticity. They often filmed from the viewpoint of a station wagon, creating an intimate connection with the urban backdrop. One memorable scene from New York, New York captured the magic of Rockefeller Plaza, with spectators gathered around the skating rink, enthralled by the duo of Frank Sinatra and his on-screen partner. In addition to his on-screen successes, Gene Kelly was working on his autobiography before his untimely demise. The legendary performer wanted to share behind-the-scenes stories of his career with readers, reflecting the passion that drove his work in entertainment. Looking back, Gene Kelly's impact persists through his films and autobiography, which offer insight into his charisma and talent in the world of entertainment. In Singin' in the Rain, Gene Kelly, portraying Don Lockwood, found inspiration from costume designer Walter Plunkett's anecdotes about the challenges of early sound shooting. The comical scene where Jean Hagen taps Jean Kelly with her fan in the Dueling Cavalier mirrors a real incident involving B.B. Daniels and John Bowles in Rio Rita. In The Three Musketeers, Jean Kelly, though 35, took on the role of D'Artagnan, who was scripted as 20. Interestingly, Alexander Dumas envisioned D'Artagnan as 39 or 40 in January 1648 at the start of the sequel 20 years after. As Don Lockwood in Singin' in the Rain Again, Gene Kelly faced the harsh reality of the transition from silent to sound films. Like Lena Lamont, many silent actors lost careers due to mismatched voices. Silent star John Gilbert serves as an example, not for his voice, but for the overly dramatic lines he uttered. 
The lines spoken by Gene Kelly's character in The Dueling Cavalier are reminiscent of the dialogue that doomed Gilbert's career, as seen in the William Shakespeare scene from the Hollywood Review of 1929. In these roles, Gene Kelly adeptly brought characters to life, drawing from real-life mishaps and the challenges faced by actors during the industry's evolution. In movies like Singin' in the Rain and Anchor's Oig, Gene Kelly showed incredible talent both on and off the screen. In Singin' in the Rain, he choreographed a tricky dance scene with a moving belt and lots of dancers. It was a 37-second shot that really caught people's attention. During Hello, Dolly! Filming, there was some fuss from co-star Walter Matthau about screen time, but Kelly just joked about the movie's title, saying it's all about the main character, not the supporting cast. It shows how he was confident and had a good sense of humor. In Anchor's Oig, Kelly paid close attention to detail, even in the animated parts. He noticed little things like reflections on the floor and worked with animators to get them right. This shows how dedicated he was to making things perfect. Gene Kelly didn't just act. He made a big mark on movies. He showed innovation, professionalism, and real talent, and that's something that still matters a lot in the film world today. In the movie Anchors Oig, he did a great job as Joseph Brady and got nominated for an Oscar. It was a big moment for him and showed he's good at acting. In The Pirate, he played Seraphin and helped with a new way of shooting scenes with Technicolor cameras. In Cover Girl, there's a famous scene where he and Phil Silvers give each other a high five. It's one of the first times people saw that on screen. It shows how good he is at making his characters feel real and friendly. These movies show he's not just good at acting, but also made cool changes to how movies are made. He knew a lot about making scenes look good. His work in these films made a big mark on the movie world. Ray Bradbury's book, Something Wicked This Way, comes had a special dedication to him. Tony Martin, who was married to famous MGM star and dancer Sid Sherry's, could easily tell who she danced with on set. If she came back with bruises, it was from the tough Gene Kelly. If not, it was the smooth Fred Astaire. In the movie An American in Paris, he played Jerry Mulligan with Leslie Caron, who was 19 years younger. He was 38 and brought his unique style to the role, which contrasted with Caron's youthful energy. This showed his long-lasting influence on Hollywood's dance scene. His way of dancing impacted many dancers and choreographers. The grace, precision, and emotion he brought to each dance captivated audiences and set a standard for excellence in the industry. His work with famous choreographers and directors helped to shape the golden age of Hollywood musicals, earning him a place among the legends of cinema. From memorable performances to groundbreaking choreography, his work in dance is still celebrated and studied today. Through his talent and dedication, he left a lasting impression that continues to inspire and entertain audiences worldwide. Indeed, his influence on the world of entertainment remains timeless. Gene Kelly, known for his roles in famous films like Brigadoon, Singin' in the Rain, and Anchor's Oig, left a significant impression on the world of cinema. In Brigadoon, he played Tommy Albright and aimed to cast Moira Shearer as Fiona, but she declined. In Singing in the Rain, during his famous dance number, he bows to a display of a bathing beauty with the word Mahot beneath it, which refers to a person who drives elephants. In Anchor's Oig, Frank Sinatra spent eight weeks learning a dance routine for a scene with him. Despite Sinatra's dedication, it took 72 takes to achieve the desired footage, mainly due to his meticulous pursuit of perfection. Sinatra remarked that he could have completed an entire film in the time it took to perfect that one scene. His commitment to excellence and his influence on dance and film continue to have a lasting impact on cinematic history.